When you go through a spiritual awakening and discover spirituality, your life changes in so many ways for the better. But spirituality isn't all smelly roses and unicorns and fairy dust. There's also a dark side to spirituality that some people get lured into and stuck in, especially when they first awaken. And getting stuck in these spiritual rabbit holes can really leave you feeling powerless, depleted, and disconnected from your soul truths. In this video, you'll learn the top six spirituality traps that can keep you stuck and in low vibration so you can quickly come out of them or avoid them altogether. Coming up. Hello, beautiful soul. That intro that you just saw is from my brand new online course, Awaken, that's going to be launching on July 20th. I designed Awaken to help people who are going through difficult spiritual awakenings, specifically helping you ground your energy and get to a place of more stability and clarity. Awaken is a six week course that's going to have step-by-step -step practice videos that are gonna be really detailed and gonna really help you center your energy and calm yourself, especially if you're feeling lost and confused in this particular time of your awakening. Awakening. We'll also have a really strong community component with this course where you can connect with other people and even find study buddies that you can uh, connect with during this course. And there are many more perks associated with Awaken. Awaken is only open once a year. So if you feel a pull to work with me in this transformational new course, I hope to see you in July. For more details on Awaken and to join the wait list and the email list for the course so you could be the first one to know when it launches, I'm gonna leave a link in the description box below so you can get all the details and sign up for the email list. I hope to see you in July. And before we get into the video, I also wanted to let you know that there is a free workbook added here as a supplemental resource. That workbook is gonna have some key takeaways and also some homework questions that are gonna help you go deeper on the content that we discuss in this video. So now let's get into the dark side of spirituality. So. Contrary to popular belief, a lot of people think that sometimes spirituality is all love and light, and you know that is one side of spirituality, but there's also a flip side to this coin. There are a lot of uh, dark rabbit holes, that, as I call them. There are, there are quite a few dark rabbit holes in spirituality that people can really get sucked into, especially when they're first awakening. And usually what happens is these kind of dark rabbit holes, they, they start to take people down some really, really uh, kind of dark loops, dark thought loops, Loops, dark, uh, they start thinking very negatively. They start seeing things in a really negative way. And what ends up happening is the further they go into these rabbit holes, the more they feel disconnected from themselves, from their souls, and from the source of all things in, and in the universe. So I wanted to really address these, these dark rabbit holes because every day I get messages and emails from people who are stuck in these rabbit holes that I'm gonna talk about in this video. They're stuck and they're really in a place of fear and they reach out to me because they really want to know if what they believe or what they've been told, if it's true, if it's not, because it really scares them. And so I get a lot of messages from people who are kind of stuck in these kinds of mindsets and beliefs. So that's what this video is for. Really, gonna, we're gonna really address some of the most common spirituality traps that there are out there that I've encountered in working with so many people from all over the world. But I wanna leave a side note here before I get into the spirituality traps, I wanna leave a side note. And the side note is that if I talk about a spirituality trap here in this video and you feel like you're stuck in it or you have been stuck in it, it doesn't in any way mean that you're a bad person or that you're not doing your spiritual awakening the right way, okay? So when we get stuck in these kinds of, of rabbit holes and these darker rabbit holes within spirituality, it has nothing to do with our value. It doesn't make you a bad person or a good person. It's just, you're always this beautiful, amazing soul. But sometimes when we're down here in human form, we 
can get stuck. We can get stuck in repetitive loops and patterns and kind of the dark sides of things uh, when, we, when we incarnate, all right? But it's never a judgment of value. You're an amazing eternal soul and you always will be whether you're stuck in one of these traps that I'm gonna talk about or not. I've been stuck in them, uh, in some of them that I'm gonna talk about today. I've been stuck in them too. So it's not, a, it, again, not a judgment of value on your part. If you haven't been stuck in any of the traps that I talk about in this video, that'll be great because then at least now when you know these top six spirituality traps, you're gonna be able to avoid them if you ever come face to face with them, all right? So wanted to leave this side note before we get into the top six spirituality traps that I have for you today. Trap number one is us versus them. This is this is probably the one of the most common traps that I've encountered and one that exists in many spirituality circles, unfortunately. Unfortunately, and this is when we awaken, but we remain in what's known as separation consciousness. So really what we are remaining is, is we're remaining in the ego way of seeing things. And the ego likes to see things as me versus them, me versus that person, me versus the world. That's how the ego sees the world. That's how the mind sees it in, in this kind of boundary of separation between me and the universe. When we awaken, when the awaken is authentic and when the awaken is really, when the awakening is taking us deep into the true nature of our souls, we don't, we're not in separation consciousness. We're, we go more and more into what's known as unity consciousness. So when we awaken, what usually should happen is that we start to feel connected to all things, not separated from all things. And so this is a trap that unfortunately I see so much. And it's when people start to say, you know, um, that person out there is a really bad person and they're not spiritual. And, you know, so it's going to be me against them. As soon as you pin yourself against someone else, whether it's a person, a group, whatever, whenever you start to see the world and behave in a way where you're separating yourself from anything outside of you, that separation consciousness and you're still entrenched in this us versus them way of seeing things, you're still not going deep within into that soul truth. And I'm, I'm kind of uh, putting my hand close to my heart because unity consciousness is really at the center of the chest. When your awakening goes deep, when you start to really tap into your soul, you realize that you are connected to all things that there is no such thing in a real sense. There's no such thing as a you versus anything else out there. It's all interconnected. The, the, the core reality of all of existence is connection. Uh, we are connected to everything. We're all a part of this oneness, all right? But a lot of times, especially when we're first awakening, we can get really entrenched in these kinds of me versus them, us versus them kind of mentality that really keeps you in separation consciousness. The more you're in separation consciousness, the less you can feel at one with the universe. Now, let me give you a practical example of what this can look like within spirituality circles, just so we can get really down to earth and we can see a practical example of what I'm talking about in this trap. All right. So I'm going to give you th probably the most common example that I have of this trap. And that's when a person believes that the world is dominated by a group of rich people. There are different names for it. Some people call it the new world order or the world order there, depending on what rabbit hole you go down, people are talking about this in different way, but it's this fundamental belief that the world is being dominated by a small group of people and they're pulling the strings on the whole world and everybody else is just a bunch of puppets, <laughs> okay? This is really common within some spirituality circles. And this is an example of that entrenched trap of us versus them, okay? Now, I really get, I get a lot of messages about this, about people asking me, you know, what, what do I think? What am I gonna do about the world being dominated by this world order or whatever it is, Illuminati, whatever, there are different, different names for these things. But what am I gonna do? What are spiritual people supposed to do about this horrible evil? And every time that I read a message like this, I just, I feel really sad because I can feel that the person is in total and utter separation consciousness. It, it, they are trapped in this us versus them, okay? Now this type of belief, it has two real, two components that are important for us to discuss. One of them is victim consciousness. And this is so important because a lot of times when we awaken, we don't realize that we're still in victim consciousness. And a part of the awakening journey is actually waking up to your power. And if you've watched any of my videos, that's one of my top missions in the world is to help people awaken to their own inner power. 
When you believe something like this, like the world is dominated by a small group of people that are pulling all the strings in the world, what's really happening is you're, you're holding on to victim consciousness. Because if there's a group of people that's pulling the strings, then the rest of us are just a bunch of sheep, right? Like, or a bunch of puppets where who's pulling this, if someone's pulling the strings, there's gotta be a bunch of people that aren't pulling any strings at all, meaning they're puppets. So this is a form of victim consciousness. The more that we stay in victim consciousness, we are going to remain completely, completely powerless. So victim consciousness, one component of this toxic belief. A second one is the rejection of responsibility. And this is one that I talk about a lot. So when I say, pay attention to this energy. When I say that there's a group of people that's dominating the whole world, what I'm really saying is I'm letting go of my personal responsibility in the co-creation of the world as it is. And this is really something that spiritual people, as they awaken and they come into their power, we have to take personal responsibility for our contribution to the world that we have created. Because the world is the way it is, because the seven plus billion people on it each make choices every day that contribute to the co-creation of everything that's happening here. The moment that I say that it's that person, that super rich person's fault, what I'm doing is I'm throwing responsibility over to that person and I'm saying, oh, see, I'm a victim, it's not my fault, I'm not contributing to any of this stuff, you see? So these two, um, these two components, victim consciousness and rejection of responsibility, these are the two key factors when someone falls into this, into this black hole, into this dark rabbit hole of believing that there is such a thing as me versus them. Okay, so I wanted to give you a practical example of what this looks like, but it can look like anything else. It can look like you, for example, saying, you know, I'm never speaking to my mother or my father again because they did this to me and I'm the way that I am today because of them. You see, this is us versus them, us versus them. There's another example of that too, okay? So if you feel like you're getting stuck in this trap of us versus them, just remember that you're not doing anything wrong. It's just time to go deeper and deeper and deeper, connect to your heart and connect to the true fundamental truth that there is no such thing really on a spiritual level between me and the world or the world and me, okay? That there are no groups that are different from each other. We are all a part of the same source and we all come forth kind of, you know, in, on these adventures in, in the universe, but we're all coming forth from the same source. We are connected to each other. All of us are connected to each other and to all things. And I really do want to reinforce this, this kind of mantra. I'm going to leave you with the mantra because it's a part of us all coming into our personal power, which is crucial during a spiritual awakening and during any kind of awakening on the planet. And that is that reality is a collective co-creation. All right, I love this mantra. Reality is a collective co-creation. There's no such thing as some people controlling the world and little old me here is powerless. That is not what happens. What happens is our reality as you see it and as I see it is a co-creation of the seven plus billion people that are down here right now and the billions that came before us, right? Because energy, can, we continue to, to kind of go through things in reality that have been created before we even incarnated. But the point is they were created by billions of souls that have been down here. So reality is a collective co-creation. And the moment we really stand in this power, we stop pointing fingers at whoever the heck we're pointing fingers, okay? When we point fingers, it's that's, I say it's a little, uh, uh, I use a term and, and it's spiritual laziness because when we start to point fingers, it's easier to do that. It's easier to say that it's that rich person's fault or that person's fault or that president's fault or whatever. It's much easier to point fingers. It's so much harder to come into taking responsibility for my participation in, in reality, okay? When I point fingers, what it really is, that's an abdication of my power. It's an abdication of my personal power, okay? So if you feel like you're, you're having the tendency to do this, if you're looking out in the world and you're seeing a bunch of them out there that are supposedly destroying the world and you have no participation in it, 
Remember that this is a trap. Remember that you're falling into this trap and you just have to take a nice deep breath, get out of it and just say to yourself, reality is a collective co-creation. I am a part of the creation of everything that I see out there. And if I want to change anything out there, the first thing I have to do is get out of this trap that I'm this, this loop that I'm in right now and come into my power because I cannot change reality from a place of powerlessness. All right. Wanted to really reinforce this message because this first trap is one of the most common that I find in spiritual circles. Trap number two is the negation of physical reality. This is really common also. Uh, it's, it's getting less than it used to be, but this used to be very, very common uh, in earlier generations. So before when people would awaken or when people would, would open up to a spiritual life, they would usually be removed from society. Okay. So think a monk or a monk, you know, just meditating in an ashram and just staying there for the rest of their lives or a nun that that, that goes into a cloistered um, convent. So this is usually how spiritual people in the past lived their spirituality. They renounced their physical lives and they removed themselves from society. And that's what was, that's what was seen as living a spiritual life. It's not the case anymore. It really isn't the case anymore because what was happening before was there was actually, this is another form of separation consciousness, even though we may not notice that this is another form of separation consciousness. There really is no such thing as physical reality and spiritual reality. They are one in the same. Everything is spiritual. And so now what's happening is we're being asked to kind of come into ourselves, come into our power so that we live our spiritual awakenings within everyday regular life. We don't have to be cloistered anymore. We don't have to go live by ourselves in a forest forever. We don't have to hermit for the rest of our lives. All right. Now there's another aspect to this trap that used to be very, very common. And it was the idea that physical reality was in essence evil. All right. And I'll give you two examples of physical reality that was, um, programmed into us to be seen as evil. This is especially coming from religious templating. All right. One of them is a rejection of the physical body. So if you, I was raised Catholic. Um, if you have any kind of Christian upbringing, you've probably heard of the process known as mortification. So mortification used to be when old Catholic priests, they would whip themselves. If you've ever seen images of that, they would whip themselves as a way to atone for possible sins. So basically the body was considered impure. And so they would want to separate. If you had a spiritual life, you'd separate from the body because the body is disgusting and impure and not holy. All right. So that's one aspect that was really heavily programmed into us. And it still affects a lot of us because a lot of us, we don't even feel comfortable in our own skin. And it's because we've been programmed through so many centuries of believing that this beautiful vessel of God or of the universe is impure and needs to be constantly purified or made pure. So that's one aspect. Another aspect uh, that I see uh, that has to do with the negation of physical reality is to do with money. This is very, very common. There's still a strong belief in some spirituality circles that if you're spiritual, you should reject money. You should literally not even touch money because money is again, unholy, dirty, evil, all of these things. We still have a lot of sayings around this, like money is the source of all evil is a very common saying in English. Okay. Now again, hugely problematic because what happens is when a spiritual person rejects money, they're rejecting the possibility of attracting abundance to themselves and using that abundance to help affect change on the planet. And I always tell people, if you are a light worker, if you are a spiritual person, please do not push away money because abundance can be used to affect significant amount of change for the better on the planet. All right. Now these two examples, money and the physical body, they are seen as unholy and evil, but they're not because again, there is no real separation between physical reality and spirituality. The, everything is spiritual. Everything is the universe. Everything is God. If you like to use that term. All right. So when this trap, if you find yourself getting stuck in this trap, if you find yourself awakening and then suddenly you feel like you need to give away all your money or that you shouldn't even be working for a living, that you should be working for free. If you start to feel this within you, just remember that these are old templates from older spirituality circles that are slowly dying, hopefully will die very soon because this is very detrimental mental to spiritual people who are awakening. All right. If you find yourself falling into these traps, 
Take a nice deep breath and just say to yourself, I'm not going to go down this dark rabbit hole. I live in a spiritual world. There is no difference between physical reality and spiritual reality. And I'm here to live a spiritual life within regular everyday reality, just like everybody else. I don't need to push anything away. I don't need to cling to anything and I don't, and I don't need to reject anything either. Okay. So from a place of, I'm going to live from a place of non-attachment. All right. So there's the second trap also really, really common in spirituality circles. One way of looking at physical reality that I really love to use is to look at physical reality as spirit animated into form. I love to see it this way. So whatever you're looking at, whatever your, your five senses can capture from out here, that is simply spirit animated into form. <laughs> so money is spirit animated into form. Your body, your physical, your beautiful physical body is spirit animated into form. And everything else that you can see or touch is the same thing. It's all spirit. So when you look at things this way, what ends up happening is there's no rejection of reality. When I reject physical reality, I end up rejecting a part of myself because when I reject physical reality, what I'm saying is I'm passing a judgment on the decision that my soul made in coming down here in the first place, right? Your soul made a decision to come down here and evolve in this physical based reality. Your soul wasn't wrong. <laughs> Your soul didn't make the wrong decision. Your soul made a beautiful, perfect decision to evolve in this kind of reality. So why would you deny it? Why would you reject it? You see? So when we do this, we create a rift between our souls and ourselves. We create this rift between the lower and the higher self or the soul self and the human self. And when we create these rifts, it can really lead to again, more separation consciousness. I feel disconnected. I don't feel connected to the universe or all things. Okay. So I wanted to reinforce this. Remember physical reality is spirit animated into form. There's no need to reject any of it. You just know how to live in this world. There's a saying that I love to use that's been used. I don't even know the, the source of it, but it's been used a lot in spirituality and I use it a lot to just remind myself. And it's the saying that goes, live in this world, but not of it. If you've ever heard that, that expression, live in this world, but not of it. Meaning that learn to kind of play around in physical reality without getting attached to it, clinging to it or rejecting it. All right. There's no push or pull. You're just having fun down here. You're enjoying things without getting attached or without rejecting them. All right. So, so this is another trap that I really wanted to talk about. Don't deny physical reality. Physical reality is a really important important reason why your soul chose to incarnate here in the first place. Trap number three is the superiority complex. Okay. This happens when sometimes when a person awakens, and again, this is coming from the ego. So, uh, the really these traps, the source of these traps is an overactive ego. All of them, all six of them is an overactive ego. And this one is definitely when it comes to this trap of super, the superiority complex, this is definitely an ego on overdrive, an ego that's still in control, even after you've been through an awakening. Now this superiority superiority complex looks something like this. So the person awakens and they start to do all these spiritual practices. They start to feel connected. They start to heal. They start to shed all this past baggage. They start to see all their old patterns and they heal them. They do a lot of work on themselves and they do a lot of healing work to kind of free themselves from all this stuff. But then suddenly they start looking around and they start to judge other people as being inferior to them because they're not awakened. All right. You can, you, there are a lot of circles that where this, this is a problem. So the awakened person starts to think that they're better than an unawakened person. And this is so detrimental. And I'll, there, there's, I'll, I can give you a couple of practical examples, but one, one term that's used a lot. And I see this a lot in spirituality circles. Sometimes when I'm, when I'm scrolling through comments, it's when, when an awakened person calls an unawakened person, a sheep. Okay. I don't know if you've ever, if you've ever seen this in spirituality forums or comments or anything like that. So basically that's a highly judgmental and charged term to mean that the person that's awakened is better than the person that that's unawakened. So there's that superiority complex. 
This is again occurring not just because of the ego, but also because the person is not really in their heart centers yet. The heart center isn't fully activated because when the heart center is activated during a spiritual awakening, what you're going to start to feel for people that are unawakened, it's not judgment, it's not spite, it's not pity, it's not anything like that. What you start to feel for unawakened people is compassion and empathy and a lot of unconditional love. And you start to give people a break because you realize that everybody's doing the best that they can at the level of consciousness that they're in. That's an authentic awakening, a true beautiful awakening where your ego quiets down and suddenly you start to look around and you give people a break. You give people the benefit of the doubt because you realize that they are, they're only human and they make mistakes and we all hurt each other. And so you, you actually start to see the world and other people, whether they're awakened or unawakened, you start to see them with a lot of love and a lot of compassion and a lot of empathy that's what a truly awakened heart does, okay? So if you catch yourself kind of looking at someone who's not spiritually awake and your mind says, oh, you know, poor thing or whatever like that, if you, if you feel this judgment coming up, it's just a sign that your ego is on overdrive. Your ego is having that superiority complex. Just take a nice deep breath and relax. And you can just say to yourself, everybody's doing the best that they can, including myself. <laughs> everybody's doing the best that they can at the level of consciousness they're, that they're in, including myself. So I'm going to give myself and everybody else a break. And I'm going to learn how to see the world with more compassion and more empathy. Okay. So, so that's another important trap. That's very, very common. There's a Buddhist saying that I really love to use, um, that really helps to kind of quiet this superiority complex. If you're feeling like you're trapped in this or that this has ever happened to you before, there's a, there's a Buddhist saying that I love and, and it goes something like this. Uh, it, it goes, uh, before enlightenment, chop wood and carry water after enlightenment, chop wood and carry water. <laughs> I love this saying so much because you see the beauty, the simplicity in this saying, the simplicity in this affirmation, but the deep profound truth in it. Before enlightenment, chop wood and carry water. After enlightenment, do the same thing, chop wood and carry water. And this is really to say that when a person is going through a genuine spiritual awakening, so much changes within them, but it doesn't mean that they have to then think that they're better than anybody else. Because at the end of the day, even with the most profound spiritual awakening, we continue to live life uh, in the same way, you know, not in the same way in the sense that our energy is totally different, but we continue to engage in the world also. So we're going to continue to chop wood and carry water even after an awakening. And if we think we shouldn't chop wood and carry water after an awakening or after enlightenment, then we're not really enlightened and, and we're not really going deep in our spiritual awakening to begin with. Okay. If we think we're too good to chop wood and carry water after an awakening, we're not there yet. We're not going deep into the soul truth uh, of what your soul wants down here. Okay. So I love this affirmation. Use this affirmation a lot. If you feel like your ego is getting a little bit of a superiority complex now that you're awakened, sometimes this happens when people awaken and their family and friends stay unawakened, they start to judge them. And so just catch this in yourself. If this is happening to you, just take a nice deep breath and say to your ego, I release any kind of superiority complex. I'm not better than anyone, whether I'm awake or not awake. I have exactly the same value as anyone else on this planet. And I'm going to start to look at people with a lot more compassion and empathy because everybody's doing the best that they can. Trap number four is called dwelling, right? This one's a common one. This one is one that I was guilty of falling into quite a bit in my spiritual awakening. And what dwelling is, is when we, when we start to go through the awakening process, a lot of times what happens is there's a lot of stuff that comes up to be uncovered, to be healed, a lot of past pain, past trauma, even past life experiences. So you start to dig deep and bring to the surface things that need to be cleansed in you, healed and released. But, okay, that's all good. There's nothing wrong with that. That's all good, but there's a but to this. <laughs> and the but is that sometimes we can get so invested in digging deep and digging deep and digging deep that we don't stop. <laughs> we never stop actually thinking that we have things to heal and, and things to fix. And so we just keep dwelling and dwelling and dwelling and we get stuck. That's why this is a trap. All right. The example that I like that I, the metaphor that I love to give of this is, you know, let's say that you, that you're running down the street and you fall down and you scrape your knee. Okay. And your knee is a bloody mess. And 
you know, let's say you clean up the wound and you put a nice bandage over it and okay, the wound is clean, ready to go, and now you're gonna let it heal. But let's say that I rip the Band-Aid off and I start picking at the scab prematurely. <laughs> What's gonna happen? Is that wound gonna heal? No, it's not gonna heal because I keep picking at the scab so I keep re-wounding myself, all right? This is the metaphor that I like to use for this trap. There is a fine balance between going into something that needs to be healed but or between that and just staying stuck there. And, and I know that there's a fine balance and this is really that something very experiential and I had to learn myself also. I remember that, that I actually started this work, I actually started to notice this dwelling aspect of me when one of my guides, I was in deep meditation and one of my guides literally came to me and he said, you know, you get stuck a lot, you get stuck a lot in healing. And it was because of this tendency of mine to, you know, when I got to the bottom of the pit, I never thought I was at the bottom of the pit, so I kept scraping to see if there was more down there, but I was at the bottom of the pit. There was nothing else to see. And so this is where, um, this is a little bit of a skill. It's gonna be a little bit of a skill on your part to know when you've gotten to the bottom of the pit, you've healed what you had to do, and now it's time to move on, <laughs> to not dwell, all right? This dwelling, very, very common trap. Uh, again, this is something that I did for quite a while in my awakening, very common trap. And it's just something that you're gonna have to learn how to feel. You're gonna have to learn how to feel when a wound is done and ready to go or when you need to go deeper in it. And I can't tell you how to do that. This is something that you're gonna have to learn through experience, but, but it's good that you know now that this is a trap. It can be a trap if you just dwell constantly on picking the scab out of a wound, <laughs> just constantly and instead of letting it heal and letting it go, okay? So something that you're gonna have to, to learn through experience, but dwelling is can definitely be a spirituality trap that keeps you stuck endlessly for years trying to heal trauma that, that is already healed and you don't need to go deeper in. Trap number five is called chasing the carrot. <laughs> okay, so what's chasing the carrot? So when we awaken, there's this drive that we have to growth and personal development and healing. And this is all wonderful and this is all healthy. But here's another but. <laughs> a lot of times what ends up happening is we end up chasing a proverbial carrot, whatever that carrot is, whether it's we're chasing enlightenment or we're chasing bliss or we're chasing ecstasy or we're chasing happiness. We're chasing some kind of spiritual finish line that we just keep chasing and chasing and chasing and we're never actually okay in the present moment. Now, if you haven't heard the term chasing a carrot, the English term chasing a carrot, uh, literally the picture of that is, is an image of someone chasing a carrot and they keep chasing it and chasing it and chasing it. They don't realize that that carrot is attached to their back through a pole. <laughs> and so what ends up happening is they're just gonna keep chasing that carrot indefinitely because it's actually attached to their back. So when they move towards the, towards the, the carrot, the carrot's gonna move with them. And so this expression in English, chasing the carrot, is used a lot to, to signify something that you're chasing that you're never going to get to because as you're moving, that carrot is moving too. <laughs> so it's constantly moving. It's not a static finish line. And this is used a lot. This can be a big trap for us. Essentially, when we start to chase a carrot during our awakening, we're chasing carrots because we're not okay with the present moment and who we are in the present moment. So we're chasing carrots or we're chasing enlightenment, ecstasy, happy, happiness, a partner, money, whatever it is that we're chasing we're chasing out of a place of escapism because we're trying to get away from how we feel or where we are in the present moment. We're not okay with where we are in the present moment. And that's why the chasing the carrot becomes a trap. And you can see why it's a trap because you're never gonna get that carrot. It's gonna move as you move. It's a constantly moving target. And so this is another trap that, that we really have to learn to spot in ourselves. We have to learn how to spot the difference between genuine growth and genuine interest in wanting to heal and wanting to develop myself. We have to, we have to kind of pinpoint the difference between that and, the, and, and me chasing things constantly because I think that I'm gonna be a better person after having them or I think I'm gonna be more enlightened once I get to that carrot, that thing, whatever it is, okay? So this is another trap pay very, very close attention to how you feel and see if you are chasing anything in your life, whatever it is. If you're chasing something constantly, now is the time to get yourself out of this spiritu spirituality trap, 
Start to take a nice deep breath and just ask yourself, why am I not okay with myself right now in the present moment? What's wrong? What, what do I feel like is missing? And start to journal about all of this so you can pinpoint where this, this drive to chase those carrots is coming from. That's, that's how you get yourself out of this trap for good. Because here's the thing, if I'm not okay with myself right now, I never will be. <laughs> I never will be because I create my future based on my present level emotional state. So if I'm not okay, I'm creating a future where I'm not okay. I'm just perpetuating that, that vibration constantly. And so that's why it's really important for you to catch this in yourself, how you're feeling and whether you're pursuing enlightenment or awakening or bliss or in whatever it is that you're pursuing. Am I pursuing that just as a way for me to joyfully and in a healthy way develop? Or am I pursuing that as a form of escapism because I'm not okay where I am right now? Okay. This is really fundamental. And, and again, this is very experiential. This is something you're going to have to feel in yourself. Okay. Now, now here's, here's another way of looking at this so you can feel this energy within you. All right. There is a difference. There's a huge difference between me running away from something or walking towards something. <laughs> you see, how, can, can you feel the difference between this? There's a huge, I'm going to repeat it again. There's a huge difference between me running away from something versus walking towards something. All right. Fundamental difference in the energy. If I'm escaping something, I'm sure as hell going to continue to escape whatever it is because I'm taking my energy with me constantly. Okay. So when I'm walking towards something that to me signifies more healthy growth, I'm walking towards something as a form of self-development, but I'm not walk walking towards that because I don't think I'm good enough, or I don't think I'm healed enough, or I don't think I'm spiritual enough in the present moment. I'm walking towards something, but from a position of just self-love and compassion and, and power, personal power, you see? So totally, totally different energies. Feel this within yourself. Ask yourself, am I chasing carrots? And if I am chasing carrots, which ones are they? Take a nice deep breath and release yourself from this kind of, from this kind of, of trap. This is a huge trap, all right? It's time to release yourself from it if you're in it. Trap number six is toxic positivity. Oh, this one drives me insane. <laughs> Sometimes I get a little crazy about this one. Toxic positivity is very common in a lot of spirituality circles still today. And what toxic positivity is, is this, this excessive focus only on positive emotions and thoughts and a complete rejection of anything negative. Okay. So, you know, the common example sometimes I give is if, if you go to a yoga class and the instructor, you're walking in and the instructor says, Hey everybody, you know, we're just, we just want positive vibes here. No negative vibes in this space. Just positive. If you've ever heard anybody say that, that is the image of toxic positivity. All right. And that means that a person is just accepting or stuck on anything positive and they're rejecting anything negative. Now, can you see how problematic this is going to be? Because you are a human being. I'm a human being. The likelihood that I'm going to feel some negative emotions and I'm using air quotes. So if you're hearing me in audio, instead of watching me on video, I'm using air quotes because there is no such thing as positive or negative emotions. Okay. There's no such thing. Emotions are, are, are they are, they are all equal. And as humans, we're going to feel a huge array of emotions from happiness to joy, to ecstasy, to sadness, anger, rage. We're going to feel all of these emotions in one way or another. And that is the normal way of being human. There is nothing wrong with feeling negative emotion. All right. When you're stuck in this trap of toxic positivity, what ends up happening is people bypass all of the negative emotions. And when you bypass something, guess what happens? It gets stuck in you. So a lot of times it's not a coincidence that the people that are out there saying that they are so positive and they're happy all the time. When you actually, if you can read their energy, you can see that underneath all of that happiness is a seething, sometimes seething resentment, sometimes a lot of sadness, sometimes hate because they've never actually allowed themselves to process those emotions. So they carry them around. All right. Toxic positivity is very problematic and you see them in a lot of new age circles. Okay. So be careful with this one. There's, there's this particularly dark aspect, dark and, and, and toxic aspect to this, to this toxic positivity. 
and the, that I want to talk about because that even it even compounds the 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 problems. All right, and that's the 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 toxicity of shaming. Okay, so this is when someone who is feeling a negative emotion, let's say that they just had a heartbreak or they lost somebody really important, and they're just in deep state of grief. They're just in a deep state of grief. And let's say they, you know, they go to a yoga class. Let's say they go to a yoga class with that instructor that says only positive vibes. Imagine that, okay? So they've just lost someone. They're in a deep state of grief and they walk into this yoga studio and the instructor is saying just positive vibes, no negative vibes. And the person is just, they're just torn and they're doing their yoga poses and they're crying and you can tell that they're in a lot of grief. Sometimes what happens is the people that are in, trapped in this toxic positivity, they'll actually shame the person who's depressed or who's not feeling well or who's sad. Sh they'll shame them and they'll say things like, oh, you know, you know, just, you know, put a smile on your face and let go. And they'll say things like this that are so problematic because they end up shaming the person that's feeling these negative emotions. So they feel worse, not better. Okay. So that's another toxic aspect of this part of this toxic positivity is the shaming of others who are feeling negative emotion. All right. And that only adds to the problems. Okay. So this is another trap. This is a trap that causes a lot of pain in people because again, whenever you try to hold on and to be happy all the time, you're going to be inauthentic and you're going to be bypassing significant emotions that need to be healed and processed in you. Okay. Now, if you want to go deeper on, on, on this toxic positivity and what bypassing looks like, and if you want to catch it in yourself and be able to heal it, I shot a whole video on spiritual bypassing passing. I'll leave links to that in the description box below if you want to watch it after this video. Now I want to hear from you. Have you fallen into any of the spirituality traps that I discussed in this video? Let me know all about it in the comments below. And don't forget to download our free workbook that comes as a supplement to this video. Click here to subscribe to my YouTube channel or head over to my website where you could download my popular free guided meditations. And don't forget this video here on spiritual bypassing that I talked about. That'll be a great thing for you to continue viewing. All right, beautiful soul. I love you. I'm out.